and on a regular basis as an ROV technician you you see so cool um biology in the, in the yeah. water it's it's pretty much like watching a live underwater documentary yeah um on a regular basis you see um dumb octopus mm. um just big shrimps wow. um all the biology so anyone who's interested in the ocean and the life that lives in it that is it's, it's a cool job Welcome back to the National Oceanography Centre's Into the Blue podcast, where we talk to the people leading the way in raising the profile of the ocean through research, exploration and advocacy. We hope you enjoy today's episode. Hello, I'm Dr Zoe Jacobs and today I'm joined by Emre Mutlu to learn more about NOx remotely operated vehicles um, and how they help us observe the greater depths of the ocean. So welcome Emre, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So. Before we get into the details, I really wanted to find out a bit about your journey to NOC. So have you always wanted a career in the ocean? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, um, I've always been fascinated by the, by the ocean. It's, it's vastness and the life that lives in it. Mm. And um, this combined with my passion for robotics, um, I think I'm at the right place and I feel like I'm doing my dream job. That's amazing. You're definitely in the right place. <laughs> um, so what did your career path look like? What did you study, for example? Um, I studied computer engineering. Mm -hmm. um, so I have graduated as a computer or software engineer. Mm -hmm. And after that, I have started um, programming robots. Um, I was doing robotic software engineering at a company, um, but I was working less exciting and less fun robots um, before NOC. So when I found this job, I actually got excited and um, <laughs> yeah. And you've been here ever since. <laughs> exactly, yes. <laughs> uh, so what's actually your role at NOC? What, what does that entail day to day? Um, I am an ROV software engineer. So I pilot and operate ROVs mm -hmm. as well as look after their control systems, um, network, um, anything to do with computers and software with the ROVs really. Cool. So before I start asking you a bunch of questions on the ROV, I'm just going to say that we are very lucky to have a Lego model of Knox ROV here with us today. If you're watching on the video, you can see it there. Um, the real thing is much bigger than this, I assume. It is actually. It's it's about the size of the room. It's okay. um, it's two meter by two meter by two and a half meter, I think. Oh wow! Okay, huge then. So, so, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, we can see it here. What actually is an ROV? Um, so ROV, to, to begin with, actually, ROV is, um, stands for Remotely Operated Vehicle. Mm -hmm. ROV is a tethered underwater vehicle or a robot um, that is connected to the vessel with a tether, which we actually call umbilical, um, okay. quite affectionately. <laughs> <laughs> um, so ROV is a robot that dives underwater mm -hmm. up to our, rob um, our ROV, um, dives up to 6,500 meters. Wow. Um, it's a robot that is equipped with um, many sensors, cameras, lights, thrusters that allows it to move in um, all three axes and lots of storage to keep the samples that's been picked up from the sea, mm. um, seabed and the manipulator arms that allows us and scientists to collect samples from the, from the sea. Cool, I can see those arms there. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, so how many of these things are there in the world? Um, not that many, especially the um, scientific purposed um, ROVs, not that many. I would say um, between five to ten major okay. full ocean depth. Um, oh wow, not many then. Um, scientific yeah. purpose ROVs. So um, especially the full ocean depth, 6,500 meter rated mm. ones are quite limited mm. um, in terms of availability. Cool. So, so we're really lucky to have one at not. Exactly. We're <laughs> really lucky to have one of the um, most capable ones um, available at NOC to UK and all the scientists. Yeah, cool. So how does how does this ROV differ from the other vehicles that we have at NOC? So the gliders or the ALRs, for example, which we've talked about before on this podcast. Um, so the main difference is actually the tether. So okay. the ALR, the gliders, um, autosubs, they are autonomous vehicles. Mm -hmm. So once they're deployed in the water, they operate autonomously oh, according to the mission that's been programmed in. Mm -hmm. And they are limited by their battery life. Mm. So the main difference with the ROV, it's got a tether. So it actually has a much longer endurance. Mm. We can stay in the water for much longer periods. And the biggest thing is it delivers a live feed to scientists, to the ship, to the vessel of high quality video and it allows us allows scientists to collect um, precision samples. So scientists are able to watch um, the life that is in the sea mm. as it happens in its natural habitat, and they're able to um, watch 
and collect any samples they want with the with the ROV. So that's that's the biggest difference. Um, and the um, the ROV is controlled by the operators that sit in the control room yeah. of the ROV on the ship. Mm. Um, so we, as the ROV operators, control the ROV live and um, do all the tasks scientists requires us to do. Cool. So presumably then you've worked on a ship before with one of these things. <laughs> yeah. um, can you tell me a bit more about how it gets deployed? Of course. Um, deployments and recoveries of the ROV is actually a textbook description of teamwork because um, you have to do it very coordinatedly with mm. your with your teammates. Mm. So for, to deploy the um, NOC's ROV, it takes four of us um, to work in um, perfect coordination. So these roles are one pilot, one engineer, uh, one winch driver, and one oversight person, mm -hmm. as well as all the officers in the um, in the bridge. So we keep um, in, in co communication all the time. Um, obviously, the pilot pilots the vehicle when it's on the surface, keeps it at a safe location, at a safe distance from the ship, whilst the crew are attaching floats on the cable. Um, the engineer is working with the pilot in mm -hmm. the control room and basically assisting pilots with the management of the CCTVs and all the sensors, turning things on and off on the ROV mm. and um, giving any help that pilot needs. And the winch driver is obviously driving the winch um, during the deployment. And the oversight person is actually being the pilot's eyes outside. So the pilot actually sees mm. the ROV from the CCTVs in the control room, but you can never um, have as good image yeah. as an extra person outside. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. So, um, yeah, so as, as a pilot of the team, I sit in the control room, watch 20 screens in front of me and yeah. then um, try to do my job safely. And we all wear headsets, um, which allows us to have two-way um, constant communication with yeah. the officers and within each other as well. Wow, that sounds like a whole kind of situation. <laughs> so you have so you have lots of people kind of on deck getting getting the rov into the ocean and then everyone else is, is in the control room exactly i'm literally imagining so he says lots of screens i'm imagining like sitting in like a gaming chair and you've got like loads of screens around you and everything going on <laughs> exactly yeah when i see when i show the um photos of the control room to my yeah. friends they're like oh that looks like spaceships yeah <laughs> that's basically... how i imagine it so that's good to hear. <laughs> yeah. um so it's basically two two chairs one for the pilot one for the engineer yeah. and they we have 20 um, screens in front of us um, for all the cameras all the feed from the cameras two touch screens in front of us to control all the sensors and the equipment yeah. on the ROV um, and we have another bench behind us for scientists so three scientists are mm -hmm. usually with us during deployment so they're recording and yeah. seeing what's, what's going on as well cool so once it actually is in the ocean yeah. I guess the pilot steers it to wherever it needs to go. Yes. Um, does it always sit on the surface or does it go right down to the bottom or? So when when the ROV is deployed, it is actually designed to float on the surface. Mm. So once we deploy it and once all the floats are on the cable, we drive the ROV um, to a safe distance from the ship. Mm -hmm. And once we get all the green lights from all the team, all the um, bridge, we start our dive. Um, because the ROV is designed to float naturally, um, we use the vertical thrusters to descend in the water right. and um, depending on the water depth it is usually 3,000, 4,000 up to six and a half kilometers oh, wow. we descend to the seabed and conduct the science that scientists require. How long does it take to get that far down? Um, it usually takes hours. Does it? <laughs> so yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, I guess it doesn't just float to the bottom. <laughs> no, no, it is. So it, we usually descend or ascend about 30 meters a minute. Okay. Quite a slow control process. Exactly. Probably so, for the best. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So when you consider um, you're going to 4,000, 5,000 meter, yeah. it takes hours. Yeah. Um, which is again quite exciting because you don't know what you'll see in that water column. So you are um, hoping for something interesting. Yeah, I bet. Um, and is any of it automatic or does everything have to be, um, someone has to be in control of it 24 seven? Um, so at all times, yeah. we have to have um, at least two of us in the control room, okay. just in case um, anything goes wrong, obviously. Um, ROV is designed to be controlled and piloted by operators at all times, but um, our ROV has got quite intelligent um, features with it as well. So even though we are there to operate it, 
where you can actually control it with a touch of a button and it can actually move with a precision of a centimeter. Mm, so wow. when we give it a command of moving 100 meters forward, it will do it completely on its own, mm. keeping its height or altitude mm. or depth, and then it will stop when it gets to it. Wow, cool. And if you don't do anything, it'll just stay there. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> you hope. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and how long are these missions typically? Like hours, days, weeks? Um, it's all down to scientists' mission planning, obviously, okay. um, what, what they want from that dive. Um, but when you spend two, three hours on the way down, two, three hours on the way up, yeah. you want to make it worthwhile. Yeah, so um, our, tip our typical missions are between 18 to 24 hours. I think our longest mission is about 48 hours, okay. if I'm not wrong. It might be even longer. So because we operate 24 hours a day, mm. um, we actually don't have a limit so we operate in um, shift patterns okay. we split into two mm. team every team operates for two hours mm -hmm. um, 12 hours and we just rotate so okay. when we deploy the rov we can keep in the water for 24 hours 36 hours and um, once scientists get everything they want from that dive mm -hmm. we start coming up cool and when you go on the ship with it do you do multiple dives per every time you go out or exactly yeah. so um before the before every expedition we have a um a few meetings with scientists yeah. to understand what they expect from the um expedition mm. and how many dives they expect us to do okay um typically every expedition we do about uh 15 to 20 dives mm. i would say quite a few yeah the, the most i have done in one expedition so far is i believe 38 dives oh wow um so <laughs> you can get quite, quite busy as well yeah it sounds like a lot <laughs> Um, so speaking about missions, are there any memorable missions that you can tell me about? Um, I think every one of them is memorable in their own way, mm -hmm. but <laughs> I believe you can you can never forget your first mission, the first time you go to sea yeah. with this um, with so such a cool um, piece of kit. So when I first started my job, my first mission was two weeks after my start day. So I started this job, and then two weeks after I went up the North Sea. Oh. Um, and it was quite a different expedition as well in terms of the project we were, we were doing. So um, that's, I would say, my most memorable um, expedition. We were operating at such a um, shallow depth um, on that one because we, we typically go down to two, three, four thousand meters. But on that case, we were down 100 meters, a very shallow depth for especially an OC's mm. ROV. Um, this comes with its own complications and different operations types. And for the whole expedition, we were actually within the same seven meters um, circle. Right. Considering the size of the ROV, trying to operate in the seven meter, um, surrounded by all the scientific experiment that you shouldn't really knock off, yeah. <laughs> knock over. Um, it was quite a difficult task, but it was really enjoyable. And I believe um, we were there to do experiments about carbon dioxide storage oh, under the seabed so interesting that's the beauty of it every every expedition you learn something new about science as yeah. well and as, a, as an engineer um, yeah i can imagine you, you can't do that every day yeah That's every job absolutely um another question has just popped into my head actually so you're saying that one was quite shallow in comparison so because you because it's tethered the whole time yes and you can move quite long distances i imagine you've got to be careful with like other vessels or other things getting in the way exactly so actually half of the job that we're doing with the rov is a tether management as well right. so we try not to go too far away from the ship mm. um, we try to keep it at a safe uh, distance and when we're moving we try to move the ship with us as well okay, and sense, especially yeah. so when it comes to the ships around our operations that's mostly the officer's responsibility as they are on the bridge they mm -hmm. can um, see mm -hmm. the surroundings so they keep us safe mm. but when it comes to our operations we work with the officers to move the ship with us and depending on the environment that we're operating on the seabed we try to position the ship sometimes behind us sometimes mm. um, in front of us so that's um, that's the key for sa safe operations as well yeah um, so all the time it's basically paired they move together yeah yeah cool so that was the North Sea. Any others, any other kind of different places that you've been or things that you might have seen? Um, I think my first time in the Pacific Ocean. Um, so we've sailed off Costa Rica last year, mm -hmm. um, actually two, two stages of the project. We've sailed off the um, Costa Rica to Clarion Clipperton Zone mm -hmm. um, to conduct some science there. That was my first time in the Pacific Ocean and it was um, 
It was a very interesting project again. I think yeah. I'll never, never forget um, that expedition. And on a regular basis, as an ROV technician, you you see so cool um, biology in the in the yeah. water. It's it's pretty much like watching a live underwater documentary. Yeah. Um, on a regular basis, you see um, dumb octopus, mm. um, just big shrimps, wow. um, all the biology. So anyone who's interested in the ocean and the life that lives in it, that is it's, it's a cool job. Yeah, I'm imagining like monsters of the deep like exactly yeah <laughs> yeah i mean you, you can see sharks that's just um swimming by yeah um so that's that's a regular occurrence yeah oh that's really cool like a live david attenborough documentary exactly. in front of your eyes yeah such a privilege to be in it yeah yeah no it is um so that's the that's the kind of stuff you can see with the cameras and obviously you've got lots of sensors that you can measure depending on the diff whatever the science um mission is but what about these i'm really interested in these arms which you can see on the lego model yeah. here what are they for what do they do yeah it's actually very um very accurately placed as well i'm really impressed by the model <laughs> um so they are basically our arms underwater mm -hmm. and um they are surprisingly accurate and precise and very dexterous um they can lift really heavy weights so arms are mainly used for um, deploying and recovering scientific experiments and collecting samples from the seabed mm. um, that scientists see through the cameras and want to have a closer look, okay. um, want to record for a while. And then the ones that they need for, for their scientific research, they want us to collect them. So these arms with the, with the jaws they have, mm. they are actually as precise as our own hands. Mm. Um, we control them with the mini masters unit we have in the control rooms and they basically mirror anything we do in the control room so using that mini master just like our own hand we pick up something from the seabed open a box that's on the rov and then put it in the box and then close it it's oh, cool it's impressively um precise and accurate yeah. um, when it's used correctly that's incredible um so what, what kind of things are scientists interested in on the seafloor that they might want to put in a um, box and bring up to the surface <laughs> exactly um it can be a biology it can be a rock depending on what what they are studying mm -hmm. so um it can change every dive as well okay um it de depending on the size we have different methods of sampling of these as well so we can we can grab them with the arm and then put it in the box mm. if they're more delicate or if they're really small to grab with the arm we can use the suction sampler which mm. is pretty much like an underwater hoover mm -hmm. so we just go there and then hoover little things and then put them in a um, isolated chamber yeah. for scientists to study when they come to the surface um, so they can collect rocks they can collect um, biology mm -hmm. with um, specialized tubes we can collect um, sediment samples from the seabed uh, called push cores. Mm -hmm. So we can take um, sediment cores from the uh, seabed. Using the arms, we can do um, rock drilling. Mm -hmm. So we can take rock samples um, from the rocks. Pretty much anything yeah. that scientists need on the yeah. seabed, so we, we make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> exactly. That's fascinating. Uh, so in your, in your opinion, how important are ROVs in observing our ocean particularly when we think about the life it sustains um i think pretty important so mm. i think of all the um underwater vehicles as a part of the same puzzle which is the oceanography mm. and if you take one of them um, out it will not be complete so rov is a really crucial part of this puzzle because it, it allows scientists to have a live feed from the seabed yeah. and allows them to observe the uh, life that lives in the ocean in its natural habitat as it happens it's pretty much like as i said watching a live documentary so it allows them to um, go explore these places and pick what they want and if they're discovering something new a new species at that point they know oh mm. we've never seen that before mm. we want to collect it mm. um, so that in that regard um, it's a really important part of the ocean oceanographic science i believe and when it's used correctly with the other types of vehicles, um, ALRs, gliders, mm. um, autosubs, it helps the oceanographic science massively. Yeah, absolutely. Right, final question. So what is next for the ROV team here at NOC? Are there any exciting projects or deployments that are coming up that you can tell us about? Indeed, there's always. So <laughs> as we speak, um, we're doing a major overhaul on the ROV, okay. um, making sure it is ready to go all up to date as well so um whilst this all is going on 
we are getting ready for our next ex- expedition in Mediterranean, Ooh, yeah. um, just just off Santorini. Mm-hmm. Um, Sounds to, nice. <laughs> I know. I can't <laughs> complain. <laughs> um, I th- I believe we'll, we'll study some volcanic activity and okay. volcanic structure in the Mediterranean. Mm. Um, we've been quite fortunate for the last couple of years. We've been to Pacific. We've been to um, Caribbean, and now we're going to um, Santorini next year. We, there are some really cool stuff I think in the pipeline as well so we're just waiting for them to be confirmed cool so I guess watch this space exactly (laughs) watch this space cool well thank you so much for joining us today it's been so great hearing all about the ROV thanks a lot for having me we hope you enjoyed today's episode of the podcast to ensure you don't miss out on future episodes subscribe on Spotify Apple Podcasts YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts see you next time